the overall idea of this work is uh, that there, there is a hypothesis that uh, people get radicalized uh, while using social media websites. Uh, particularly YouTube. This is Manuel Ribeiro, PhD candidate of the IC School at EPFL, who recently published a paper on radicalization risks on YouTube in collaboration with researchers at EPFL and at UFMG in Brazil. And there has been a lot of editorials about this in the press, a lot of uh, suggestion that this was happened from happening from NGOs uh, and from uh, uh, different parts of uh, of, of of the media and from activists and so forth, and uh, and we wanted to really get to the, get the data and uh, measure uh, if this was really happening, if this was significant, and to which extent this was happening. YouTube has become huge. Every day, in average, two billion users watch YouTube for around half an hour. This adds up to more views on YouTube than searches on Google. Clearly. YouTube is hugely influential, especially if you take into account the fact that each new video recommendation is a small nudge towards one sort of ideas rather than others. And there's a lot of suspicion that more often than not, this nudge is a nudge towards more radical contents and ideas. Okay, but how can we study this scientifically? We traced uh, the user's trajectories using their comments, right? So we, we crawled uh, more than 100,000 videos, we called all the comments uh, from a set of channels that were either radical channels that belonged to a, a community called the alt-right or by other communities which we called gateway communities which are not uh, radical in itself but they have been pointed out by others as being like uh, entry points to more radical content. And what we did is that we, we tried to trace uh, how users ended up into the radical uh, community and, uh, and thus we had this radical community, these two gateway communities and additionally like uh, media channels for comparison, so large media, media outlets uh, that had channels on YouTube. So what came out of this analysis? The main conclusion of our study is that we find that there is systematic migration from these gateway communities to the, the alt-right as suggested by uh, countless other people before and not only that there is significant migration but that the the population of the outright if you get if you think about it like everyone who comments on these outright videos a significant portion of them uh, went through this radicalization pipeline mm -hmm. so in 2018 for example around 40 percent of everyone who commented in the outright in previous years had had exclusively commented in one of these other gateway communities, yeah. which suggests that there is indeed this like migration uh, aspect to it. This is very interesting and compelling. The study of YouTube comments strongly suggests that users are nudged towards more and more radical contents. But is this nudge due to the YouTube recommender system? For the same videos, for the same channels, we for around a month, we collected uh, recommendations uh, from 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 the from the, the the YouTube's algorithm, but it's important to stress that these are non-personalized recommendations. Yeah. So like they're not the kind of recommendation that you get when you are logged into into your account. And there uh, we we got two types of recommendations. So this channel, these recommendations of like videos to watch next that you get once you 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 enter a YouTube video, and also once you enter a channel. There's this like channel recommendations. So what came out of this analysis? We found that the outright videos were not being recommended by YouTube uh, video re recommender system and it was s slightly recommended by the channel. So it seems from this analysis that the YouTube recommender system may not be at fault here. However, it's very hard to make strong claims about the recommendation system there. First, because we don't have the personalized uh, version of it and second because while for comments we kind of have this historical data that traces from like more than 10 years back for this we only know how the algorithm was in this month and YouTube has reportedly been trying to uh, basically uh, not push people towards to these channels yeah so it's kind of like it's unclear if we didn't find it because it doesn't exist if we didn't find it because it used to exist and now it doesn't 
or if it only exists for personalized uh, accounts. Let's insist on this. Personalized content recommendation is a key component of the YouTube recommender system. But this is also something that's virtually impossible to audit unless you actually have access to such data about what is recommended to whom. Unfortunately, academics don't have access to such data. Without such data, the best that can be done is an analogy with recommendations from an unlogged user. But we should expect this analogy to be very limited. Unfortunately, little can be said about the radicalization through personalized recommendation simply because we lack data about such personalized recommendations.